A powerful engine can turn a car into a legend, but a bad one can spell disaster. Some were riddled with recalls, while others were just plain disappointing. So, what went wrong? Let's take a look at 15 of the worst engines ever made. BMW N63 4.4 bit turbo. Getting a V8 sounds like a blast, but with the BMW N63 4.4 bit turbo, that excitement comes with some serious headaches. The main issue? Cooling. The two turbochargers are tucked between the cylinder banks. A clever design for packaging, but not for the heat management. Those turbos generate a ton of heat, and when the water cooling system inevitably acts up, overheated cylinder heads aren't far behind. That means saying goodbye to the variable valve control and camshafts, and hello to a massive repair bill. On top of that, the N63 V8s are known for timing chain stretches and leaky fuel injectors. A small gas leak can wash the oil off the cylinder walls, leading to compression loss after a few cold starts. Volkswagen 2.0T till 2012 Volkswagen's PD TDI 16V made its debut in the Passat V6, aiming to replace the beloved 1.9 TDI. At first, it seemed promising, smoother and more refined, but beneath the surface, there were some serious problems. The engine struggled with turbocharger failures, dual mass flywheel issues, and persistent electrical glitches. While some preferred the Bosch injection system over the Siemens one, neither was perfect. But the real trouble came from the balancing shaft setup. Unlike the older 1.9 with just one, this engine had two, and that's where things got complicated. With a high gear ratio making the oil pump spin twice as fast as the crankshaft, the pump became a weak point. If the oil supply failed, these engines were practically guaranteed to face major issues and a hefty repair bill. Subaru EJ Subaru's EJ engines have earned a bit of a reputation, and not always for the right reasons. Whether stock or tuned, they're known for a common issue. Spun rod bearings. The root cause? Oil. Or rather, the lack of it. If the oil pump isn't picking up properly, or dirt and infrequent oil changes let dirty oil wear down the bearings, gaps form, oil pressure drops, and trouble follows. Even in standard form, these engines run aggressive timing and rely heavily on the knock sensor, putting extra stress on the already small bearing shells. Oil starvation during hard cornering is another common issue, especially on the track, but it can happen on the street too, with a well-tuned suspension. Smoothing out the oil galleries helps, but for these engines, it's often not enough. Northstar 32 valve V8 In 1993, Cadillac made a bold move with the Northstar V8, their first engine with dual overhead cams. The advanced 4.6 liter all aluminum engine was designed for front wheel drive cars and helped Cadillac compete with European and Japanese luxury brands. Early versions produced 295 horsepower, and later models, like the XLRV and STSV, pushed that up to nearly 470 horsepower. But the North Star wasn't without its issues. A major problem was its head gaskets, held by special bolts that stretched when installed. Over time, these bolts could keep stretching, leading to coolant leaks and overheating. The only real fix was a pricey repair that involved pulling the engine and replacing the bolts with a stronger kit, something that's harder to justify as these cars age and lose their value. Cadillac retired the North Star in 2010. Hyundai, Kia Theta, and Theta 2 Hyundai and Kia ran into some serious trouble with their 2.0-liter and 2.4-liter four-cylinder engines, and not the kind of issue you can just ignore. These engines had a nasty habit of seizing up without warning, which, as you'd guess, led to some major headaches for owners. The issue came down to tiny bits of metal left behind during manufacturing. Over time, these particles clogged the oil flow to the connecting rod bearings, causing them to wear out and eventually break. It got so bad that Hyundai and Kia had to issue a massive recall, 1.4 million cars and SUVs. Some of their most popular models were affected, including the Hyundai Santa Fe Sport and Sonata, along with the Kia Optima and Sportage. Definitely not their finest moment. Chrysler 2.7 V6 Sludge Factory between 1998 and 2007, Chrysler's LH engines, the 2.7-liter and 3.2-liter versions, powered cars like the Sebring, Concorde, and Intrepid. They offered okay power and gas mileage, but after a few years, a troubling pattern emerged. Owners started facing major engine problems, with mechanics discovering thick sludge buildup inside. 
By 2004, complaints poured in, nearly 100 to a consumer group and over 400 to the government. The culprit? A poorly designed water pump leaked coolant into the engine, turning the oil into a gel and blocking vital passages. This often led to complete engine failure. A lawsuit followed, and while Chrysler hired someone to manage claims, many frustrated owners felt the company made it far too difficult to get any real help. The GM 5.7 Diesel in the late 1970s, Oldsmobile took a bold gamble, hoping to bring diesel efficiency to their big American cars. Inspired by European success with diesel, they converted their trusty 350 V8 gasoline engine into a diesel version. They reinforced the engine block with stronger metal and added diesel heads, but trouble came fast. The engine made just 120 horsepower and 220 pound-foot of torque, weak for such a large car. Worse, it was loud, smoked heavily, and suffered constant head gasket failures. The problem? Oldsmobile used the same head bolts as the gas engine, and they couldn't handle diesel's high pressure. This disaster led to a major lawsuit and helped create new lemon laws to protect car buyers. From 1978 to 1985, Oldsmobile's diesel experiment flopped, souring Americans on diesel cars for years. Toyota 3VZ FE Surprisingly, a Toyota engine made the list of bad engines, which seems wild given Toyota's reputation for rock-solid reliability. The engine in question is the 3VZ FE, a 3.0-liter V6 with 150 horsepower and 180 pound-foot of torque, designed for the 4Runner. It was the first engine with more than four cylinders ever put in that model, and on the surface, it seemed like another Toyota success story. But head gasket issues haunted this engine. The tricky part? Sometimes it wasn't even the head gasket, just air bubbles in the coolant system, often mistaken for a much bigger problem. On top of that, these engines were known to leak oil more than most 90s Toyotas. Still, as true Toyota fans like to say, if it's leaking oil, at least it still has oil in it. Chevrolet Ecotec 1.4 Turbo the Chevy Cruze, especially with its optional 1.4-liter turbocharged engine, promised more power and better gas mileage than the 1.8-liter non-turbo version. But as is often the case, more complexity means more things to go wrong, and that's exactly what happened. The big issue? The turbo's bypass valve, or blow-off valve, releases pressure when the turbo boost isn't needed. Over time, the spring inside weakens, causing boost leaks and a noticeable loss of power. A check engine light, often showing code P0299, is usually the first sign. Unfortunately, the valve is built into the turbo, so replacing just that part isn't an option. Worse, if the valve fails, it can't let dirt in, damaging the turbo's bearings. A serious problem when those turbo wheels spin up to 200,000 RPM. Cologne V6 the Ford Cologne V6 engine, produced for decades in various sizes, has sparked plenty of debate among car enthusiasts and mechanics. A major issue with this engine is its cooling system. It's notoriously prone to overheating, especially on long, fast drives. Even after replacing the head gasket, water pump, and thermostat, some drivers found that pushing past 70 miles per hour would cause the radiator to boil over, spraying hot coolant everywhere. The problem starts with older radiators, clogging up with sediment, cutting down efficiency. Even upgrading to a thicker core doesn't always fix it. Long or narrow coolant hoses, common in-engine swaps, can choke the flow, while poorly designed bypass systems send coolant where it's not needed. Some try removing the thermostat, thinking it'll help, but that just makes the water pump cavitate, wearing it out faster. All these issues turn cooling into a constant battle, often leading to blown head gaskets or warped cylinder heads, even after spending a fortune on rebuilds. Chevrolet V6 VVT 3.6 Newer Ones The Chevrolet V6 VVT 3.6 is known for solid performance and reliability, but like any engine, it has its quirks. One big issue is the timing chain, a crucial part that keeps everything running smoothly, which can wear out over time. Another common problem, oil consumption. These engines can get a bit thirsty, often due to issues with the PCV system and piston rings. Design flaws sometimes cause excess oil to be pulled through the PCV while carbon buildup around the piston rings prevents them from sealing properly, leading to even more oil usage. Overheating is another concern. If not managed, it can cause serious engine damage. 
On top of that, cylinder misfires are a possibility affecting both performance and fuel efficiency. Yugo 55 in late 1983, the Yugo 55 rolled into the scene with a tiny 1.1-liter engine, carburetor, and all, pushing out just 55 horsepower. Its reliability? Practically legendary, for all the wrong reasons. The top speed was a thrilling 86 miles per hour, downhill, with a tailwind. At the time, it was the slowest car you could buy in the US, but owning a Yugo meant keeping up with some very specific maintenance. The timing belt had to be replaced every 40,000 miles. If it snapped, the engine was toast. Oddly, it required premium gas. And the carburetor, powered by a finicky air pump, was inefficient and rough on the engine. By the spring of 1992, the EPA sealed its fate, declaring every Yugo tested in the US failed emission standards. And just like that, it was game over. RX-8 Renesis Mazda's rotary engines are legendary from the golden era of the 80s to the 2000s. With the 1.3-liter Renesis in the RX-8 being a standout, it packed impressive power for its size, but as with any engine, there's more to greatness than just horsepower. The reality was different. These engines guzzled gas and oil, almost like the old two-stroke. Worse, worn apex seals often led to compression loss and a big drop in performance. Some say these engines last about 40,000 miles, though die-hard Mazda fans can usually get more life out of them. The real challenge, though, is maintenance. Finding a shop that truly understands these quirky, brilliant engines can be a struggle. 5.0 liter V8 JLR, Jaguar Land Rover, AJ133. The AJ133 engine has earned a rough reputation, mainly due to issues with its camshaft timing chains. There were two designs, the Subaki system with a 6.35 mm pitch chain and the INA system with an 8 mm pitch. While many thought these numbers referred to the chain's width, they actually indicate the pitch. The earlier 5.0-liter Jaguars, like the XF and XK, supposedly used the Subaki chains, but at some point, Jaguar switched to the INA system, likely a cost-saving move, though no one knows for sure. The INA setup looked cheaper, with the tensioner plunger rubbing directly against an aluminum guide, unlike the Subaki's plastic insert. Over time, this wore a hole in the guide, causing loose chains, timing issues, and in the worst cases, pistons meeting valves. Never a good thing. Ford Triton 5.4 The Ford 5.4-liter Triton V8 is a legend under the hood for millions of F-150s. Known for a solid mix of power and fuel efficiency, Ford truck owners often brag about racking up hundreds of thousands of miles, but not everyone shares that smooth ride. Some engines suffer from sludge buildup, which throws off the cam phasers, usually heard as a ticking sound on the right side. If ignored, it can lead to serious engine damage, with repairs costing up to $2,500. Older models before 2003 had weak spark plug threads, causing plugs to blow out, while 2004 to 2008 versions had two-piece plugs that could break during removal, creating an expensive headache. Thank you for watching and see you at the next one.